Hi, my name is Daniel Williams. My pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you so much for joining us for our digital worship service at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. It's hard for all of us that our routines have been disrupted, that the things that we took for granted before the spring of this year aren't happening in the same way that we're used to them. But we're so grateful for everyone's flexibility and trust that to allow us to make these digital worship services and to enjoy them with us. There's a link to our online friendship tablet in the uh, description below this video. If you would click on that and let us know you're there. If you're having trouble finding that, you can always reach out to me or to the church office. We also love it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can always be notified when we have a new video posted. And it actually really helps us if you would click the like button. Um, I know it's kind of silly to have a minister asking for likes and subscribes to their YouTube channel, but it helps people who are looking for our content find it on YouTube. And so that would be a great thing that you could do for us as well. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. join me in this call to community. Let us be united. Let us speak in harmony. Let our minds apprehend alike. Common be our prayer. Common be the end of our assembly. Common be our resolution. Common be our deliberations. Alike be our feelings. Unify be our hearts. Common be our intentions, perfect be our unity. soft well at the base of time has opened. Life has touched me there, has turned me into a flower that prays for rain. Now I understand. To blossom is to pray, to wilt and shed is to pray, to turn to mulch is to pray, to stretch in the dark is to pray. To break surface after great months of ice is to pray. And to squeeze love up the stocky center towards the sky with only dreams of color is to pray. And finally to unfold again as if never before is to be the prayer.
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our first reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One day Jesus was standing by Lake Gennesaret, and the crowd pressed in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats moored by the side of the lake. The fishers had disembarked and were washing their nets. Jesus stepped into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to pull out a short distance from the shore. Then, remaining seated, he continued to teach the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Rabbi, we've been working hard all night and have caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll lower the nets. Upon doing so, they caught such a great number of fish that their nets were at the breaking point. They signaled to their mates in the other boat to come and help them, and together they filled the two boats until they both nearly sank. After Simon saw what happened, he was filled with awe and fell down before Jesus, saying, Leave me, Rabbi, for I'm a sinner. For Simon and his shipmates were astonished at the size of the catch they had made, as were James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were Simon's partners. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll fish among humankind. And when they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter seven, verses seven through 12. Ask and keep asking and you will receive. Seek and keep seeking and you will find. Knock and keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. For the one who keeps asking receives, the one who keeps seeking finds, and the one who keeps knocking enters. Is there any among you who would hand your daughter a stone when she asked for bread? Would one of you hand your son a snake when he asked for a fish? If you, with all your faults, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will your heavenly parent in heaven give good things to those who ask? Therefore, Treat others as you would have them treat you. This is the whole meaning of the law and the prophets. Words from our ancient tradition for our present day understanding. Today we're looking at Jesus' words that if we ask, we will receive. Uh, if we seek, we will find. If we knock, the door will be open. Now to start with the disclaimer. If these words are literally true for you, every time you ask for something, you receive, and every time you seek, you find, and every time you knock, the doors open. You can turn off the sermon now because you're way ahead of me. That has not been my experience in life, and I don't really think that's what Jesus is trying to say. When I was taught religion as a child, it had to be taught to me as a child. And so things like prayer sounded very much like uh, sitting on Santa's lap. If we ask for the right thing in the right way, then we would receive it. And there was just this kind of a sense that if I didn't get what I wanted, that there was something missing in me, that I didn't have enough faith. Um, so I'm not necessarily the model. If, the, if these words are literally true, then I'm not, not the one to learn the lesson from. If, if my prayers were all answered, then COVID wouldn't be here anymore. There would be uh, international human rights, and the Cowboys would have a decent defense. Not necessarily in that order um, in terms of uh, prayer, but... What I want to do is talk to you not without assuming where you're coming from in this. For some people, prayer is that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I understand that. For other people, they don't believe prayer is like that at all. They believe that prayer is more attuning ourselves 
to something that we don't really understand. Um, and then other people are not religious at all. Uh, would never think of praying at all. And I think all of those are equally acceptable ways of understanding what Jesus is teaching here. I think that what Jesus means by prayer is deeper and more profound than any one traditional approach. Um, I think for some people it is prayer, the one-on-one -on -one conversation. For other people it's more like meditation, going through a kind of a transformation inside. For other people it's um, exercise, it's contemplation, it's sitting in the backyard thinking. <coughs> the point, of course, is that we go deep in our own hearts and somehow tune what is there to the reality that we, that we experience. So we're asking the question, what does prayer mean to the modern mind? And we're not assuming that I have the answer for you. I may have some suggestions, um, hopefully some insights that will be worth your time here today. But I cannot know, to be quite honest, I cannot know what your answers are. I think we share questions together and um, we can learn from each other's answers. But I think yours are going to be different than mine. I think the punchline is going to be something like um, the... Rolling Stones tune, you can't always get what you want. If you try, you get what you need. Jesus is going to give this formula. Ask, seek, knock. And one of the things that you can't see in this description is that in Greek, the word for ask means to continually ask. So it's not saying if you ask one time, you're going to get what you want. It's not saying that every time you knock that the door is going to go. It's if you continually live with a certain attitude, then you're going to find life opening up for you and being enough. The other word is in the past tense. I believe it's pluperfect is, is the term for it. It's standing in condition of already having done something. So I think what it's saying is if you keep exercising, you're going to find yourself strong. If you just pray for muscles, that's probably not going to do it. So Jesus is talking about a lifestyle here. And I think however you do that is absolutely fine. I think they're, it's, it's a very individual thing. So ask means that your questions matter. I was taught in Sunday school class by some of my teachers that what God wanted me to do was to memorize their answers. Other teachers honored me by listening to my questions and being excited by my questions and not answering them, celebrating them. Because the truth is, our, the great questions of humankind guide us all through life. Those are what we have in common, not the answers. The answers divide us. The answers numb us. So the great question is, who am I? Why am I here? What is good? How do I know what is true? Those questions are universal. And just sharing the questions takes us to deeper places. It hints that what we really are wanting to do is to tune our hearts to reality. Um, we don't really know what we want, especially as children. Think about if you were suddenly visited by everything you ever asked Santa for. It would be a nightmare. So uh, to realize that we learn as we go and that we really don't know what's going to make us happy. And there's nothing that permanently makes us happy. So ask and keep asking. Have that curious spirit. Do that continually and it will guide you. If you think about the history of the church, when we focused on our answers, it's produced inquisitions and crusades. When humanity is focused on our questions, on our curiosity, it has led to discoveries. Um, it has led humankind uh, 
toward the stars. So I think the first thing that Jesus is, is giving us is a recognition that our questions matter and that they're important, uh, more important than our answers are because the questions will be permanent throughout our lives. The answers come and go. And the second thing Jesus talks about is um, seek and you will find. I was taught a view of God where it was almost like God was hiding from me and I had to figure out a way to make God manifest to me. The idea of finding something that's everywhere is too paradoxical to even think about. Like how does a fish find the ocean? It's not something outside of us that we go looking for. It's more like a quality that's all around us, all within us, and even in the things that we abhor. So the way I think Jesus said this is that when you first find something, there can be a danger to that. In, in the ancient world, in this part of the, the world, there was a scorpion that folded up and looked like an egg. So Jesus said, who, if you ask for an egg, would give you a scorpion? It's saying that if we got everything we wanted, it would destroy what we need. Right? Because sometimes something looks good to us, but it's not going to be good for our whole lives. And it's not going to be good for, for the world that we want to live in. The, word, the, 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 the parable here about the bread who would give somebody stone that asked for bread. There were also, the loaves of bread didn't look like wonder bread. It looked like rocks. It looked like, you know, little boulders sitting there. So, um, at least not the flattened bread, but, but you know, the traditional baked loaves can look like stones. So it's saying that whether it's God or the universe or evolution or whatever it is, that it's a good thing that we don't get what we want, but what we need. Life is a journey, not a destination. So there's no stopping place that's going to make us happy. We think there is. We think if we get this something, if we get that relationship, if we get that job, then we'll be happy. And somewhere along the way, we need to realize that eternity never stops. But there's no happy ever after because the story just keeps on going on. So we have to learn to love the journey. We have to learn to love seeking. We can't be so insecure that if we don't have uh, everything there in our hands in a tangible way, that we become afraid and, and insecure. So if we continually love the journey, if we can turn and seek, if we're curious, explorative, if that's a word, um, then we will find ourselves, we, we will find ourselves um, in that situation of having found what we were looking for. And then finally, Jesus says, knock and the door will be open. Uh, we don't know what parts of life we're closing ourselves off to. And we can't think our way to wisdom. We have to live out wisdom which means we have to make mistakes. It's a trial and error thing. That sometimes we have to do things before we even know what we're looking for. A um, long time ago, I went to a counselor about a, uh, uh, somebody who was having trouble getting along with there in the church. And uh, or they were having trouble getting along with me. Um, and so the, the counselor, it drove me crazy at first, had me talk to this chair as if it were that person. And it sounded stupid, it was ridiculous, but for some reason it worked. So for some reason, um, when we take that step in faith, when we do the dance, um, and it doesn't have to be religious faith, it's, it's trust in life, it's trust that something is born out of us, that if we give ourselves to life, if we're willing to make mistakes, then the door opens for us. Do you remember when computer games first came out 
and children could beat any adult on the planet. Because what the children were doing were hunting and pecking. And what the adults were doing were being afraid of breaking the computer. So there's a kind of trial and error nature to life where we have to be able to push the buttons and to realize that it's only in living that uh, we discover wisdom. It's only when we do trial and error and make mistakes. And when we do that as a lifestyle, then we come to the point where we discover that life opens up to us. There's a wonderful prayer from long, long ago. It's a prayer by Socrates. And I think it's in the five verses where you find it. But Socrates is praying to Pan. In Texas, we say Pan that uh, the goat-legged God with the horns and things. But pan means all, everything. It means nature, life, the life process. So realize that when you look at these ancient religions, they're not uh, really believing in people with goat legs. It's, it's a symbol system. So this is Socrates praying. He goes, Beloved pan and all ye other gods who haunt this place, give me beauty in the inward soul. And may the outward and the inward person be one. That's one way it gets translated. Another way it gets translated is, may I have only those outward things that do not disturb, may I only have those outward things that do not disturb the spirit within me. And Xenophon is talking about this incredible prayer. He says, for the gods know what things are best or good. To pray for gold or silver or sovereignty or any other such thing is just like praying to be admitted to a, a poker game. I'm updating the, the image. Uh, or to a fight. Or anything of which the result is obviously uncertain. So we don't know how events play out over time. This is how an English poet rephrased Socrates' great prayer. He changed it from Pond to uh, Jove. Uh, grant, O Olympian Jove, supreme, not my wish and not my dream. Grant me neither gold that shines nor ruddy copper in the mines. It's a little bit strained there. But give, oh, and nor power to wield the tyrant's rod and be a fool and seem a god. But give all goodly things that be good for the whole and best for me. This is what, whatever we mean by prayer, uh, takes us to. What is it that tunes our heart to what is best for the whole? That's, that's what will make us the happiest. So Jesus is not saying that whatever you ask for, you're going to be given. It's saying if, if you keep asking, if that's your style of living, that you're guided by your curiosity, and your questions. Those questions will take you where your answers can't. And he says if you keep seeking, if you're not comfortable with the, the cultural answers, if you discover that life is a journey, not a destination, then your very seeking will lead you to the discovery that you are where you need to be. And finally, if you go on knocking, if you live life joyfully and fearlessly, uh, in its kind of trial and error nature. If you go on knocking continually, someday you will realize that that very act of living fearlessly has opened doors for you. Looking back at my early Santa Claus days, I can't remember specifically what I asked for. All I remember is that warm love feeling of sitting on Santa's lap. I think that symbol is very important for what Jesus is trying to say to us. Uh, we're not really looking for things. We're not really looking for, for reputation or fame or wealth. We're looking for love. And so it has been said that anyone who rises from their knees with a heart full of love, will soon discover 
that all their prayers have been answered. I invite you now to your own reflection on these words. Hey y'all, at St. Andrews, we are continuing to honor the commitments that we have made to the ministries and benevolences that we've been working with. In fact, if you'd like to donate time, donate effort, signal boost, whatever, check out the e-news where there are plenty of opportunities for you to do that and see who we're working with to make the world a more kind, more just, and more compassionate place. Also, if you'd be interested in donating financially, if you click the link below, uh, there's a link in the description that'll tell you how to donate online. other during this time that is not like any other in our lifetime. We are grieving the loss of a beloved Supreme Court Justice at a time when we thought things could not get any worse. We hold our own pain and hurts deep within our heart. We mourn. We reach out once again for signs of hope, signs of healing, and we wonder if we will ever be at any kind of peace again. And so we gather virtually as a loving church community and give thanks for this church. We rest our hearts through the music, the prayerful words, the rituals, the familiar, and we try to hold on to grace, grace that brings loving kindness to all beings, grace that gives us a sense of balance, grace, that will bring light into this dark world. Loving one, this day we hold in our hearts Bev, who is requesting prayers to lift up her dear friend Susan, whose mother Sue died recently. Bev writes, Susan was by her mother's side day after day until the end a loving example of helping a loved one to die. We mourn with Erica and her family the death of her Uncle Tom last week from COVID, and we pray for her cousin Tom recovering from COVID. Bill is at home on hospice care, lovingly cared for by Ginny and their family. And Lynn is hospitalized this week with broken ribs, suffered after a fall. We hold those beginning chemotherapy for cancer and others dealing with a new cancer diagnosis. We offer our hearts to those in need of shelter, in need of food, and in need of health care, and our prayerful hope for an end to the division and injustices in this nation that we love. 
And this week, we mourn the loss of over 200,000 lives from COVID. We pray for clear scientific answers in the days ahead, and we continue to do our part to be safe so that others can live safely. Be with us, loving one, and all that we hold dear. Let us pray. A blessing from Jan Richardson. Let us lament what has been lost. Let us grieve in the gaps and reach into the absence and hold the emptiness with both hands. Let us mourn our ancestors whose work has been devalued or destroyed. Let us go in sorrow for the stories we will never know. Yet, let us also make an offering of gratitude for those whose work made a way for us. And then let us take up the work that is ours and let us move with the grace of the generations gone before us whom we will never know but whose stories will sing within our making. Our Disciples' Prayer Great Divine Spirit Give us the courage to acknowledge when we have done wrong, to seek forgiveness from those we have hurt, and to forgive those who have hurt us so that we may be reconciled. We acknowledge the power of self-giving love to transform individual hearts and the world. We recommit ourselves to the unconditional love of others and the work of justice and peace forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, as always, for spending this time with us. These are our parting words today. As you go out into this week, remember to honor your questions. Know they are taking you places that answers cannot reach. Remember to honor your search. Know that when we make our lives a pilgrimage, we discover the sacred wherever we are. Remember to honor even your mistakes. Remember that life is trial and error. And when you live life with courage and grace, you eventually find life doors opening for you. May you feel love blessing you and keeping you this week. May you feel love shining upon you. May love fill you with grace and affirm who you truly are. May love fill you with peace this day and forevermore. Go in peace. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We can't hold back anymore. God, who is faithful, will give us all the courage to answer the call.